Yeah, I'm the founder of Northern Power Women. She set up five years ago to accelerate gender equality from the north. And I 1,000 million percent um, put this down to um, our, my lovely guest, friend, mentor, kick her up my ass and all those kind of things. Laura Morgan, uh, six, six years ago now, I had a meeting with Laura and I was trying to cajole Laura into talking at uh, TEDx Whitehall Women, which I'm um, the licensing for. Um, laps now um and i was trying to cajole laura and i was like i've got i've got 15 minutes to have a conversation so we met for a coffee and then laura's like i mean in, i'm intrigued by this discussion i'd like to have a bit more of a conversation so i ended up at a backwash while laura was having her hair done pre-talking at a school i think that afternoon needs I subsequently, yeah i subsequently ended up in laura's flat thinking this woman is either awesome or she's going to kill me murder me and do away with me in her flat in pimlico um, as part of the discussion, um, I was talking about Women First, which was the organisation that I was running um, at the time. Not my organisation, it was in those days where I got paid a salary. Does anyone remember those? Um, and Laura just came round to me and said, why the F are you not doing this for yourself? This is effing ridiculous. And I remember thinking, well, I don't want to run a business. That's scary. You've got people to look after. You've got travel expenses to pay for. You've got all this stuff going on. And I was, and I was fearful, but I just went, I'm fine. I'm absolutely fine. But it was that one, one sort of seed that was sown in my mind that going forward, you start looking at things differently. And two or three months later, I went, you know what? I'm, I'm going to do this. Um, and there was a big festival happening in Liverpool called the International Festival for Business. And I created an event called Women Inspiring the Economy. Lara came and spoke. And subsequently, on the back of that, we created Northern Power Women. So I think for me, I will always appreciate that kick ass, that random coffee come back us conversation. But from that one person who had that faith in me that thought that I could do something as crazy as this, uh, I have always been uh, grateful, skeptical, thinking she was not, all of those kind of things. But uh, I think that's the power of um, your community. That's the power of that mentor. That's the power of having sort of sponsors and enablers around you. So I couldn't think of anyone better to do the first first of these conversations that we're having to help us through to kind of make some sense of where we're at we don't want to kind of rehash what everyone's been talking about for the last eight weeks uh, I know Laura is a very practical kind of person and it's very much around what we can do and how we can do rather than contemplating our navels and thinking of what we might do at a certain point I don't know whether that kind of tees you up a little bit Laura. yeah that'll I'm do sure. I, I, I'm gonna leave you to sort of give your own intro and journey because Laura, this, this is just way too big, but Laura is like a serial kick-ass entrepreneur and my friend and totally responsible for enabling me and, and giving me that belief that I could do something so crazy as I do now. So what I'm going to do just from a, um, uh, I'm going to, going to mute everybody um, and then I'm going to unmute Lara, I think. <laughs> We're going to use the chat function. If you've not used Zoom before, it'd be quite, you can either use the speaker view where you just see Lara, or you can put on the gallery view where you can see everyone, which is really cool. Um, as I say, we are going to be recording it. Um, if you have any questions, use the chat in your bottom bar, you will see chat. It's in the center of the screen. Uh, and please do um, add any questions that you would, you would like uh, to pose to Lara. Um, is that okay? Does that sort of tee everyone up? Let me just see if this new Shall we see if it works? And then... Love technology. Serial. There we go. Did that work? Can that you hear me? Work. Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, we're there. Okay. Um, okay, everybody, I'm, I'm going to plow in. And on the basis that a long time ago, I learned that we absorb much more um, in, a, in a much more able way than we believe we can. I'm going to go quite quickly because I, I'd like to try and sort of open up by sense checking where you're at. I'm going to introduce myself, but it's boring. So you can read it if you like online. But 
the objective here is for me to give a bit of experience back and to share also some of my latest learnings because I think we learn from everybody, but also to try and give you some artillery uh, tools, ammunition, whatever you want to call it, to fight back and think about the future. So I'm going to do some sense checking and then I'm going to go into what maybe gives you some grounding and some thinking about how you can get on the front foot. And also things about, frankly, you know, not forgetting sustainability, not forgetting the most powerful people in the universe who are your people, but also not forgetting yourself. So, <clears throat> and I'm also specifically talking, I suppose, from sort of small, small business outlook, because it's what I know, it's where I've come from, and it's where I invest. So um, you can read the boring backstory, but ultimately I made some money 12 years ago. Um, I used to sell soap for a living. Uh, I used to sell a lot of soap and a lot of hotel amenities in 110 countries. We exported from UK, but China, Czech Republic, <clears throat> we manufactured. Um, and frankly, it's thanks to this sort of old gray hairs of these that you know made me survive and thrive. So I like to give a bit back. So I'm also a great one for rule breaking and, and, and I want you to understand that you are so on the front foot, you may not feel like it, but the, ability for small business to come back with good creative available agile skills are all weapons that you already have and you've kind of got worried if you like and sidetracked that you don't have necessarily the ability to thrive so first of all i'm going to sense check stability have you fixed your own ox oxygen mask is language people have been using but the truth is is that you know, you should have done a line by line on your account. You should have looked at your outgoing cost, literally sense checking is, have you signed up to apps and subscriptions you don't need? All of that cleaning up. And if nothing else, if there is a credit line, wherever you are, meaning a government grant, um, we have a bounce back guarantee, loan guarantee. Whilst money is cheap and you really believe that you can back yourself, take the money. You know, that's not just about collections that are difficult to take, but take the money, do a root and branch review and then open up credit lines um, and prove that you are the leader you are because you've got to believe in you before you believe in anyone else. So you have to have some level of resistance. I personally like to cry in a corner uh, without anybody knowing. Um, and that's OK, too. Um, you know, I came down the stairs a couple of weeks ago and I just thought I said out out loud. OK, it was 515 in the morning. Um, I don't know if I can do this anymore. And I am working as hard as I have ever worked. It's completely insane, but actually, you know, then you sort of put your shoulders back and you, and you go cobblers, I, I, I am in it and I'm gonna do it to the best of my ability and I'm gonna take advice and I'm gonna convey my belief and become infectious in the things that I intend to achieve. And I, I mean, you know, I was laughing because my ridiculous book, you know, I endlessly write lists and relisting and reprioritizing so if you haven't sat down and almost daily written the these are the three things that i absolutely have to get done every day um i mean genuinely there are sometimes even things that involve shopping for me but you know that the, the reality that i am you know trying to do the juggle i'm fighting with a 16 year old welcome to everybody's world we need to be sympathetic um there's nothing wrong with a sodding meltdown um but actually then you've got to start getting on the front foot and being a bit clearer about, you know, you're not going to give your va values a bypass. You're, you're absolutely going to stay true to your brands. And, and some of you will have more established brands than others, but you know, I'm still writing a secondary list called the not now, which is my kind of suspend where I'm going, no, I, I can't be distracted. I've got to be disciplined, but the not now doesn't mean it's a crap idea. It just means I don't have time for it now. So I've got an opportunities place, which, when I start breathing normally again, I'm gonna get the opportunities list out and I'm gonna to say to my team, who wants to grab this? Who wants to grab this and run with this? Cause I think this is a great idea. And I, you know, I mean, I mean, also in my therapy moments where I'm sort of clearing out every bloody cupboard, I'm reminded of some of the good stuff that we haven't executed well. So don't forget to keep that list. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with being transparent in your relationships. I literally had a face to face with one of my staff across a car park yesterday. And I have what's called a without prejudice conversation because in my heart of hearts, I know I can't afford that person full time when our um, situation ends and our government is no longer 
helping us with financing and furloughing some of the team. Now, you've got to be reasonable to your team because you may want to, rip, I, I desperately don't want to let this person go, but I know I can't afford her. So I'm giving as much leeway. And the humanity that you show your internal staff, your furloughed staff, and you're about to leave staff because there may be some, you know, one of the things I, I shared with a, an organization the other day, they said, you know, how do you, by telephone, let someone go? And I'm sorry to say, I've had to practice that a lot recently, including somebody who I, you know, I adore everybody, but there was a very, very senior, scary person. And I don't want to let her go. And the only way to get into the conversation was to say her name and to say, I'm afraid this is a conversation you and I are not going to enjoy. And I'm really sorry but it involves letting you go. And I just dive in. So maybe that's an asset that frankly is worth knowing because it is the most hideous. It is the thing that you never ever get over because you're affecting someone's life that you need to respect, but then you need to get on the front foot and you need to start. I mean, I don't know what strategy really means. I just think it means this is what we're doing. This is the direction we're going in, but I'm, I'm looking at some notes because actually I have to, I'm so flipping old and I'm in menopause and I'm, you know, I have to write down everything, but I also know that not every one of my ideas is perfect. So what I want to talk to you about now is, is getting on the front foot, you know, spending a couple of minutes to introduce my lunatic asylum. You can read the book if you like. Um, but actually you've now got kind of a three to six month window where you've got to go, okay, I I'm going to come out the other side. And what, I think a great question, what does victory look like? All right. What does victory look like? Don't look any further than, oh my goodness, if I could not just think about survival, but thrival. I mean, sod it. You know, you've got a mindset. Um, and obviously I own a mindful bomb, so I can help you with that. But I mean, most importantly, condition your mind that this is not, you know, this isn't a forever. This is an opportunity. This is a chance to get ahead. This is a chance to overtake. It's all in your mindset. So you need to aim for some kind of star and you might as well aim big because it's a choice. So then actually also most importantly, just sense check what are the customer wants, okay? I mean, we work with the hospitality world. This is not a perfect world. The travel industry shut down. I even have a luggage company. We didn't sell a piece of luggage in the whole of April. Welcome to Gate 8 Luggage. We now do hygiene packs for travel and return to work hygiene packs with, you know, and I mean, we're laughing because I think we did more sales on Sunday night when we trialed and pivoted a product than we did in the whole of April. So what are you thinking where you can go, actually, what's my customer want and need in the, ne in the near term? And strategically, does that fit? I mean, we've had debates. I have a mini balm company. Um, de-stress is one of the fragrances you know do you put that in a pack do you coordinate that with another brand be true to your brand values it's very important that you don't lose the essence of your values and your brand as you do this so you may need to offer something compelling and you may need to be challenging the you know is this realistic can i execute this do i have the credibility do i do i love it because the one thing you will not sell yourself and if you can't sell yourself you'll never sell others is can I compete? Is the offer attractive? And am I honest about my service proposition? I, I genuinely tried to sell hotel amenities for 17 years. And I can honestly say, I never said the words. I think shower caps are fantastic. Actually shower caps are just used as um, divorcees, microwave plates, plate covers. And I think smokers cover um, fire alarms with them, but the truth is, is damn it, don't sell something you don't wanna sell. If I could convince someone not to buy a shower cap, they'd spend more on a decent bar of soap or some decent shampoo. So how would you then describe this new strategic focus that you're gonna apply where, you know, my brand Centered has, has a debate. It's a um, well-being brand. You know, are we gonna heighten the focus on something that wasn't as, as center to our universe and maybe um, flatten the curve, I think is the new technology, but, you know, amplify something and, you know, in business language, maximize another language and opportunity, really, really emphasize a voice. You know, it, um, I mean, brilliantly, I got sucked in yesterday by a brand. They must know me well. They must have seen my Instagram, but um, I got sent samples of something and the clever people put in an, uh, uh, um, 
a, a cream egg because I'm a sucker. So, you know, what are you doing to amuse your customers still? Because it's serious, but that doesn't take away the essence of, you know, what's at the heart of your brand? What's your brand value? I thought I'd, I'd you know, I've been packing these with a 16 year old and Scented is one of my brands, but you know, we, oh my God, the fight to get packaging revived, we're running out of stuff, but I will not let us drop the standard that we fought. So, you know, I'm also thinking <laughs> almost when I'm reviewing this strategy, think what else could go wrong? Because it's that wonderful question that says, you know, you may have the competency, you may have the team, it may be a leaner team. Have you communicated it well? Have you asked your team to play back? What is it you're trying to achieve? Because they may require a bit more training. I have a member of staff tonight who's calling in at 8.30. She's a mum, so we do bedtime and book time and we consider that she's mad. She wants to work from six till 10 in the morning. I absolutely adore her. But she is a senior salesperson who reached out today and said, Lara, I need more training because we're moving in a different slight direction. And I, could, I would hug her. Um, but actually she's saying, you know, if I'm not trained, that could go wrong and we need to have a singular voice about what we do. So she also needs to have the artillery and the tools because, you know, I'm sitting here with a million ideas and I need my lieutenants and my team to say that's a crap idea. And I have lots of rubbish ideas. So you need a, a, to embrace the learning from your own organization and get everybody in the room, which is we have proven technologically possible because if I can get my mother from South Africa on a bloody Skype a call, everything is possible. That includes downloading, you know, we've all been there. Oh God. Um, the other thing that you must do is whatever you do, accept that in a, what, what I'm gonna go on to, which we're gonna call a pre-mortem, before you start this new idea, is you also have to have the bravery perhaps to kill it, right? So you may genuinely be in a role, like Abby, that person, the senior salesperson I was talking about, we sell hotel amenities and sustainable products to luxury hotels and they are closed. They do not know they're gonna open. Alternatively, we have a yoga business that has never flown so high, Yogi Bear, and for a period of time, Abby and Beth moved from the hotel business into Yogi Bear, and they're now moving into my brand center because frankly, I've run out of yoga stock. And while we sort that out, you know, you have to be agile. And I'm very lucky I've got some, you know, some games to play um, between the companies. But, you know, do you have flexibility? Have you explained to your staff that you've got to be bolder and bigger and braver than ever before? Have you given them some tools around that? Because the thing that I love in these occasions is, the voice can do an enormous amount to break into bigger and bolder accounts who are looking for proactive solutions. So, you know, you don't have to do all the work. You need a team around you to do that. So then think about, you know, what is the next stage of how you're going to plan to do everything, get feedback from the team, get buy-in and go, actually, now I need to write it down as a plan. I mean, I'm, I'm just, this is my pad of things to do. Madless, second things to do list, different company. This is me rearranging an organogram because actually if you chart it, if you write it down, this is uh, the third go round of scribbles, it's nearly finished. But actually I'm sitting here and I'm going, you know, I have to picture and believe this as we, if you like, pivot and change the brand outlook and you need to do the same. So embrace the learning, tackle some points to thinking, be able to present it like a 16 year old, get your staff to give you feedback, and then try and kill it. So when I say kill it, you know, it's literally reviewing the what could go wrong will go wrong. So if let's think you're thinking of, oh my God, I have to make a dramatic change or even actually if I just have to earn a new kind of living, you kind of have to recontract with yourself. How will it die? If in six months you get to the other side and you didn't ask yourself the question today, what could kill it? What could kill that idea? Is it all the recruitment consultants are unemployed at the moment, so they're all going to become new recruitment consultant companies, and there's just going to be too much going on and not enough jobs in the job market to give everybody a living. What is the mathematical outcome, right? Because actually, maybe there are people that you can collaborate with, deals that you can do. I have senior salespeople approaching me going, I've got time on my hands. 
and you've got great product. I'm in, I mean, literally we have people, I spoke to somebody in Malaysia today and he said, my gyms are open, but I've got a big database. Can I sell you a yoga mat? And that came out of another conference where he just goes, I see your brand Yogi Bear. I absolutely love it. It relates to me. It's, and that is so exciting because that's someone going, I'm, I'm going to not sit on my hat. And inertia is not an option. I'm just checking the time. Um, so if I said to you, you're going to try and kill this idea, kind of what does it say on the tombstone? And if you had a survivor's biggest regret, i.e., you know, you're crossing the channel, you're in a boat, you're trying to get to the other side, but actually the boat's going down, like Simone said. Actually, what would you regret? Would you regret not being bold enough? Would you regret not printing and faking it till you make it with some kind of, you know, I mean, not being funny, but a name card counts, right? Maybe that makes it legitimate. What can you do with something that's creative in, in a material sense, in packaging? I'm just grabbing stuff around me. I mean, we've got, this is a candle proposition that I'm working on where I'm trying to reduce packaging because I think people are going to have less money to spend. But maybe if they buy one candle in the box and then they keep one candle for themselves, I can beat the candle market. I mean, that's probably a stupid idea, but um, actually I don't think it is a stupid idea. What I'm doing is I'm saying, what is the new consumer's behavior? Because we will be going into people having less money. And there will be the great divide, the haves and the have nots. And we have to be considerate and get real about maybe we need to change our product offering. Maybe we need to change the way we get paid. You know, maybe there's something else in your skill set that you can trade or you can teach or you can learn. And there's lots of things where you need to put yourself into the shoes of the people that you want to sell to. And that will then sense check what could you do now to save what you're thinking of doing before you make those mistakes? And I hope that's clear. So inertia is not a strategy. It's certainly not sustainable because you're going to starve. And yes, it's scary. I, I absolutely get it scary. I mean, Alistair, who's sold gate eight luggage for years, is now selling hygiene packs. And I've got him working, you know, to source something like 20 million flipping hand wipes, which is completely barking mad. You should all use 500 ml dispensers if you can and I know it's not as portable but then decant it into one of those crappy old shampoo bottles that I used to sell because you don't need to buy a new miniature um, so you know those values about being passionate and infectious you can work with this you need to stabilize you need to resecure you need to re-strategize you need to communicate your socks off you need to become the new I guess um, preacher of whatever the new message is and and then be really, really clear. You know, there's lots of people you can sell to, but who's the one that's going to be the name drop customer that's going to open every other door? You know, my first customer many, many years ago was the Dorchester. And I was such an idiot at the age of 23 when granny was giving me strategic advice. I didn't realize the value of that. But can you imagine that 17 years later, because I could go to everybody and say, the Dorchester is my customer. Everybody else took me seriously. Everybody. And so you're like, wow, you know, who's the name drop customer? How could you network your socks off it? Are, how, are you listening to who knows who? Genuinely, I visited family on Friday um, for the first time in ages. And in a conversation, my nephew's new girlfriend is the CRM manager at a at a very large food delivery company. And we wanna break into that company. And I'm not joking, but that was like someone looking after me and saying, I know you've been looking for a way in. And so now, of course, I've got her saying, can you just give me the names of the people I need to speak to? And then I'm gonna duck and dive. And I'm probably gonna use this um, website called Hunter.io, which will give me the right email address. I don't know if you know that one, Simone, um, but www.hunter.io is a really clever system. You dial in the name of the person and they'll give you their email address or their title and category. It's very clever. Um, embrace learning, tackle things in a sensible order, get real with the pre-mortem and then frankly, get to work. But actually also be, be um, first of all, first and foremost, be, be kind to yourself. I'm taking tomorrow afternoon off, mainly because I'm vain and the temperature is high and I wanna get some, um, a suntan, Simone, you'll relate to this. And also because actually I need a break, you know, and 
I'm going to get on my bike, which is my kind of safety release because I've done the tough stuff and I want to reset. And I've been working too many weekends and, and kind of hiding from my kids in the morning and getting up early and then being available. Um, and it's really hard. Um, and then, of course, I'm telling them to get out of their pyjamas and to empty the dishwasher and all of that crap. Um, yeah, so I, I think, you know, you've got to get singularly focused. For those of you that know you have bad, you know, bad skills at being disciplined, you have to have a talking to yourself and you have to say, I have no time to waste. And if I am a time waster and I am distracted, use those things as a reward for getting the other stuff done, right? I bribe myself because I love product development. Here I am, you know, this is something I desperately want to launch. I don't have time to do silk pillows. You know, I'm, I, and, and we're killing projects. Like it's going on the later list. So, you know, it, this is not easy stuff. And, you know, I've got, an amazing group of people and I'm, I'm letting them know that I'm struggling at the moment and you wouldn't believe how they're stepping up. So, you know, I've got my, you know, I've got my team and, and for this, I am very grateful that, you know, culturally we've worked from home a lot of the time. It's easy for us. I'm absolutely flexible about female first flexibility. I know, you know, I'm a bit biased, obviously. Um, yeah. And I think really, you know, be good to yourself, give yourself a bit of self care and congratulations. And then, you know, um, reward yourself. You will come out the other side. So what's your prize in six months time, right? What's your really big prize? The thing that you are gonna earn and the thing that you are gonna pay yourself in exchange for whatever are the sacrifices because you will be making sacrifices, you know, and I am sure there is a very tough time ahead with the sort of, I'm working my ass off and oh my God, I need a job. And I think that's going to be a real challenge. But there is that means that new businesses will emerge. And what it also means is that as things settle, country by country, place by place, product by product, there's the kind of opportunity that will spawn out of necessity. And that's human nature. So I can assure you, it is not all grim. I think there's a lot of positivity to be had. And perhaps, Simone, now we can open it to questions and Maybe people will get some value that way, but I hope that's been useful. And we will send out a note sheet that kind of incorporates some of this. And I, and I, I can only wish you well, but I don't want to just rab it at you. I think if people want to sense check, um, fire away with questions, because sometimes we, I, I'm not on the mark most, <laughs> most of the time, um, but I'm trying to help and I, I'll, I'll answer any questions if I really believe I can add value. The one thing I will end on without fail is do your numbers, right? Do your numbers. A girlfriend of mine was offered a percentage, a tiny percentage. She's a wicked salesperson, right? And she was offered two and a half percent, but told the business is gonna have a half a million pound investment in a few months time. That means she'll be diluted. It means her shareholding will go from whatever it is today at two and a half percent to 500,000 pounds coming into the business owing to someone reducing her share value because they'll be buying shares, right? Do your maths. Truthfully, in a few months time, she could have 0.05% of something that is borrowing potentially on a loan note, you know, 500,000. It, it, is the business, is this business going to work? Is it going to pay that back? You need to be really honest with yourself about whatever it is you're doing. What is the return on investment? Have you costed it right? Are you financially aware? Can you survive the starvation? I hope that helps. Thanks, Laura. Thank you so much for that speed gallop and lots and lots of forever practical advice. I'm going to go, I'm going to try this. I've, un I've unmuted you, Andrea. Uh, so I'm going to go to Andrea Edwards. And we've been doing these uh, power circles across um, six of our cities and regions over the last six days. So we did six cities in um, six days. Really kind of sense check what's happening on the ground. Um, not talking about gender pay gap or glass ceilings, but actually talking about the practical stuff. Um, and Andrea um, gave a quote. It was the very first one we did. Andrea's rolling her eyes now thinking, crap, what did I don't say? know what you're about to say. <laughs> Brilliant. But, but Andrea said, we actually should, you know, we need to 
look at ourselves because you know what we're doing right now we are making history because this path hasn't been gone before and i have repeated that and it's it's become i feel like i'm gonna to have to get a tattoo of it somewhere because i think it's really important that we all appreciate that this isn't a, a guidebook well written um of course there's been crisis of course there's been a disease and war before but this is we're in a, it's a new phase isn't it yeah but Andrea, what's your question? You had one for us. Uh, first of all, an observation uh, of, of something that I've done on this call today. I've actually got two of um, my key people within my business because one of the things I've decided is whilst I'm the leader of the business, I need everybody in my business to be coming up to my level for me to make the decisions to be challenged by, by these people. So um, one just resonating what you just said, Laura, is I have changed my strategy slightly that I just don't want to give the training or the development to me or the learns from nuggets that I get from something like this. And I've invited two key members of my team onto this call because they too can then spread the word much quicker into, into Great my stuff. businesses. Um, so that was the first an observation for others. Don't you know, share the love at this stage. The yeah. more we spread, the better we will be. Um, my, my question would be, um, thank you for the honesty about, you know, not every day is a great day. In that moment when you're on the uh, Corona coaster, not roller coaster, Corona, <laughs> which is my other lovely word, yeah. um, is how do you get yourself out of that to carry on? Because, you know, I, I do lots of work with, with other businesses, but I too can go onto that Corona coaster. And it's interesting to find out what strategies people are using to get themselves back online very quickly. God, you know, it's a great question because I think I did have that period of where I was kind of being sucked down for want of a better, you know, emotional. <clears throat> and, and, you know, I felt that I was kind of reading everything that was coming at me and unable to keep up with all this, you know, stuff. And now, frankly, I've just got a flipping good routine. I'm very disciplined about my diary time, um, you know, about call booking. And I would say to you some of the best of, you know, advice I've had is from the business groups that I'm involved in. Um, so, you know, uh, diary check-ins with my staff, one-to-one -one meetings on a regular cadence, you know, um, brainstorming and, and Friday gets together where I'm, I'm, cr I get to the end of Friday and I can barely speak English. And actually I could probably open a bottle of wine with my teeth at that stage. But, um, you know, I, I haven't been perfect myself and I, and I, you know, I felt, the other day, I just felt, you know what, I'm going to tell somebody else to run the Friday meeting because I'm knackered. Um, and, and, and I think that discipline of getting back into a, and I'm not going to call it business as usual, because this is not, this is the new, right? I don't think it's normal yet, because I really want to see my flipping staff and my family and my, uh, you know, but I do know that, you know, my list writing, my really good organizational habits allow me to check back in and actually i also would say to you there's a really good potential for how i mean you know guilt probably gonna lose loads of friends here but i love being at meal time with my whole family on such a regular basis so i kind of you know and i'm not going to feel guilty about the fact that and by the way my whole business has run i mean literally this this handbag was my gift to me when I sold my first company 12 years ago, ladies, 12 years of lasting. This is sustainability in action by quality. Granny said by quality. But the point of that is my, my laptop has been in that bag for 12 years since I sold Pacific Direct. And when I had to be really boring and in travel, I had a really smart black bag. But, you know, I don't believe we can't continue working from home. And I think there's going to be a period of adjustment. But I'm not, I'm going to see Corona Coaster for your better description as, you know, a reset. And I, I'm not going to let it, you know, I, I guess I've just moved. Maybe I'm very lucky. I had not personally SARS, but I went through SARS in my previous business. I went through foot and mouth. Frankly, if I'd seen Osama bin Laden before the Americans, I would have had him myself. You know, he nearly lost me my house. I had to put my house up to risk, um, continued survival of that company don't get me wrong best decision i ever made um i did tell my husband after six months so that's quite a canny ploy um but truthfully it's in your mindset you know and i mean says she picking up her focus bomb but genuinely you in mind over matter it's not easy because we all have different circumstances but you have to keep thinking what are your values what do you love most 
you know, you do what you love in life. At school, I had average reports and I was not the most academic. And I, because I have found things that I love and I keep reminding myself to focus on the stuff that I love doing and then genuinely not too trite. And I love the fact that you had people attending um, the meeting. You know, surround yourself with great people. Oh my God, I'm, I am already excited about when we get going and now that we've adjusted, who are the new great people that I've got in my black book that I can go, how do you fancy to come on board? I'm actually recruiting two people at the moment, right? Completely different. One is a brand new business leader. Literally, we are opening a new company in America. So sod it, I'm on the front foot. What's the, what's the focus bomb, please? Oh, centered. I mean, I'm not meant to be selling here, but she might, you know. <laughs> I'll, so share it in, I'll share it in the follow-up, Lara, just so there. Yeah. But um, the bar, literally, yeah, the candle. I mean, you know, if, if nothing else, go on to the centered is the reason for being for me that I frankly survived a brutal travel schedule. But these portable mini bombs, you know, they stick in your pocket. They they just give me a moment of confidence. You know, everybody assumes that a big gobby git like me who's sort of size 12 and and exudes confidence isn't scared shitless most of the time. Well, I am. But actually, I've, you know, I use tools and techniques and scent. My mum is an aroma, you know, qualified lunatic in lots of naturopath stuff. And from a kid's age, she ate granola and we used to call her a horse. And now it's me. Thank you. Thanks, Angie. I'm going to come to you next, Jane. Um, just unmuting you. Hi. Okay. Uh, thanks so much, Lara. Absolutely brilliant advice. I love your boldness. Definitely going to try and take a leaf out of your book with that one. Um, I just had a question because you talked a lot about new product development and obviously you, you love doing that kind of stuff. Post getting the numbers right, and I can understand, yep. you know, for most of us that might mean working with somebody to get those numbers right. What else helps you to prioritise? That's the idea. I should go with now that's the one that should wait for six months is it just your gut or do you have a no proof method? no it's back to the numbers I mean I, that's brilliant at about 5 57 this morning I wrote an email to a cat who owns an amazing young yoga company that is flying and you know she's growing and she's learning and she's brilliant marketeer brilliant innovator and we're learning business together and she wants to do some small items so i did the brutal numbers thing and i said well you know what do you want to sell this item for let's say it's a candle okay if you want to sell it at an affordable price let's call it 20 quid let's take off that so we're now at 16 quid let's halve it because american retailers want 50 percent. oh shit i've got to freight it out to america oh my god i'm now down to six quid if we sell a thousand of these and we make a quid or two it's not a lot relative to let's sell more yoga mats Let's sell more yoga blocks. Let's sell bundles, right? So the big thing for me at the moment, this is really good for everybody. If you're a product person, you know, you have to do your maths on your product and you have to also look at your range and go, do I actually need more or am I not being smart enough? And then the other thing for anybody in any country, are you exporting, right? Exporting your brilliance, exporting your knowledge. Literally today, I've spoken to a guy in Malaysia, my team in China, somebody in Dubai, and, and the world is such a small place. My goodness, do I want to get out when I want to get out? Yeah, I don't want to travel like I used to travel, and I can do a lot by phone. But actually, the experience of going, tasting, the culture, I have had my life enriched because I once had to go to Egypt, and I thought, bollocks, I'm not going to Egypt without going to the pyramids. So I got up at 4 a.m. and went to the pyramids because somebody said it's really hot and the traffic's rubbish and it was brilliant, life-changing stuff because of business, right? Because you want to do one thing and you should reward yourself with the other. Um, so yeah, I mean, do the numbers and, and, and be realistic because to sell a thousand, you know, candles, that's a thousand customers. And, you know, brutally, you need to learn some maths around if I reach 120,000 people, realistically, how many are gonna spend 40 quid or 20 quid or 60 quid or, you know, as, as the expense goes up, the pyramid is gonna get smaller. You have to do your maths. It's a great question. Thank you. Thanks, Shane. Um, 
Pansy, I'm going to come to you now. And then what I'm going to do is there's absolutely tons of questions. So I'm going to try and um, bunch a few of them together after uh, Fancy has asked her question. Hey, Fancy. Hi, Laura. Hey. Hi, Laura. Thank you. So we own a business um, designing chocolates and making chocolate moulds at the moment. So our customers are more B2B, um, so people like the bigger retailers and so on. But yeah. as you said, everyone is cutting down their budget. Everyone becoming very conservative. You know, we're working on Easter projects um, for next year. And we can already see that the number, the quantity of new developments is dropping down. So we are looking at um, expanding because we already design chocolate, make the molds, and we have good connections with chocolate um, producers. So we're thinking of actually opening up uh, rather than B2B selling, we actually want to sell the kits, for example, home making kits online to the end consumer. So but we are complete virgin in that market. So is there any like quick tips that you can? Yeah, definitely. I mean, this applies to everybody. So, you know, whatever business I have had the privilege of being involved in. And in fact, even if somebody is just, you know, saying to me, can I give them a bit of, I, I look at the competition, right? So have you looked at biscuiteers? Do you know who I mean by biscuiteers? No idea, like foxes. Oh my God. So, so what you're doing is you need to find, does that, I, I mean, I'm talking to myself like some, um, I'm, I'm quite a digital weirdo because I really want to upset my children and stay sort of with it. Um, but, you know, if you can long tail describe what it is that you're trying to do, right? So putting yourselves in the shoes of the consumer, you're going to be saying, I'm looking for a gift box of X, right? Okay. Um, so, you know, um, beautifully packaged gift set with a personalized, customized note, who pops up, right? And then study the shit out of Google page one and two, because you've then got an idea and then fake it, right? Buy the biscuits, buy the chocolates, buy the packaging, buy a whole melee of, you know, good, bad and indifferent at good, bad and indifferent pricing within the zone of what you're trying to do. I mean, the other thing, I'm just gonna grab it. Um, so she, sorry, Simone, I'm just, I think it's really important. I'm just trying to find, um, oh, yes, I've got it. Um, so I have a kind of go-to list of, of things that, and, and this, this is QVC's persona guide, right? Because the other thing is, who is your customer, right? So in here, there are segmentations of different ages, incomes, tech savvy, and they even call them, I think this is hysterical, Modest Magnolia, the oldest age group. Can you see that? Yeah. And then you've got Value Family and you've got Mainstream Mum and, and a number of other personas. And the point is, is that maybe you can find a competitive niche and go into market by being more savvy because you've studied the hell out of the competition. You know, the reason I flashed this earlier, but the reason centered is, you know, plastic free. I mean, in a brown box, try one color print, you know, no, no tissue, but recycled paper. We have studied the hell out of the competition. I've had every box in the universe. My children love me because they keep getting bloody boxes of toiletries that I don't really want or need because I want to beat the competition, right? And I should never go to market without knowing the competition. Um, price point, there's so much you can learn. Does that help in some way? Yeah, would you, uh, sorry, I'll follow on one follow on question is, would you recommend to then once we studied and I got the product, got the packaging, got the price point and description and design right, would you recommend for um, probably lower risk strategy to go on like other platform like Amazon or not on the high streets or things like that? So, I mean, Amazon is a channel, right? And you can't, in my view, you can't not play Amazon, but equally Amazon comes with its own challenges because, you know, you've got to, you've got to decide are you seller fulfilled or are you FBA and are you an Amazon expert? Probably not by the sounds of things, you know, then you've got to find the right Amazon partner to represent you and you've got to, but you don't need the, one of the things that I find, and apologies if this appears sexist to the women in the room, you know, one of the things that women are crap at is trusting others enough, right? And maybe it's because I'm just a hooligan and I'm like, I'm not the expert in anything. Might be quite a good salesperson, so watch out for that. But, you know, genuinely, I know what I can do. And I really know that I need experts elsewhere. And I'd rather 
you know, take references from others and find an amazing team that can hold my hand, educate me. And, you know, but I'm going to sense check. I mean, it doesn't mean I can't listen to, you know, Amazon expertise podcasts, which are all over the internet. And, and it means I can keep my teams honest, but it also means that I can focus on what I'm good at. So I don't think you can avoid any channels. And I think, you know, I mean, God, you should open up a shop in my back garden. You'd be wealthy. Um, chocolate. <laughs> I also think you've got to stress test your product because you can build yourself up for a lot of pain if it's doing mailings and delivery. So maybe there's something That's unique in that. Amazon probably is easier. They can just fulfill it. We just send them. Not that straightforward because there are certain packaging terms and conditions and you need to study that um, rigorously. Um, and I mean, the other thing that I think, you know, go around a supermarket and no doubt you have, but you know, maybe there's something in there, different channels. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not very good at FMCG. I'm sure there'll be other people in the, in the room that might be able to. I think that's the other really good point that the lady earlier from Groundswell Innovation made. She made a very good point, which is get help. One of the stupid, stupid things that I did when I was younger, and I'm, you know, I'm not dead yet, but I didn't really value the gray haired experience of those that were kind of in, in my sector, but many years ahead. Their black book, their knowledge of the stuff and the experiences and mistakes that you're gonna make that they've already made, their absolute awareness of the pitfalls, possibly their awareness of their supply chain benefits. You could be buying better for packaging and for sourcing. Yeah, I can't, I mean, I, I can't cope with any more investments, but for goodness sakes, find partners where you can, you know, collaborate and work together. As you know, you could, somebody's just, I think, popped up, Laura Hepburn said, Freddie, I think she meant Freddie's flowers, but, you know, greetings cards, companies give chocolates. You know, who else can you align and collaborate with? I mean, frankly, I think it's running up to my period that I'm most dangerous and God damn, do I eat chocolate then? You know, find somebody's behavior and their mood and find some original way. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I've got some, thanks, Fancy. I've got some quick fire questions, but yeah. I'm just going to have lots and lots of chat. If there's anything that anyone in this group would lead, either need help on, ask, put it in this group. If you want to put it private to me, we'll download the chat afterwards and we'll have a look and see where we connect. We've just launched a power plat platform which has opportunities on. You can offer your skills or ask for help on there. Get it on there, power-platform.com. Get it on, it's very new, it's version 0, 0.0. So let me, let me, Mrs. Morgan, throw some stuff at you. Zainab, lovely Zainab. So her question, you talked about victory. What does it look like for you? Oh, Quick, great. <laughs> oh, great question. So um, I think I'm in a very privileged position because some of the experiences we've had, we've become quite lean quite quickly. But victory for me is, and, and this may sound quite tough, um, but I still want to make budget this year. And the marketplace has changed dramatically and we've lost weeks and months. So I, at Pacific Direct, I, I very much had a growth curve despite Asama, despite SARS. I don't, you know, I want to come out with a stronger, leaner team, which are better educated, more independent, um, and I still want to be on budget. Okay. Uh, Laura Hepburn, um, she wants to know what the, the new, um, your new product is out of the Corona Coaster. We're all adopting Corona Coaster from this. Channel. Oh, that's, that's really easy. Um, and in fact, it's kind of twofold. So help me out here. Um, we have, oh my God, where is it? It's amazing. Um, so we have this, which is, um, my brand centered, spelt wrongly with an S. Um, this is a sanitizer, but it's a spray and it's got a moisturizing content and we're just, oh my God, I just absolutely love it. But, um, so that's one, but actually we're also bringing a sanitizer called peace of mind to the marketplace. And the peace of mind product is it does what it says on the tin. It's a 500 ml large size um, sanitizer. And it's already selling, you know. Um, what's my, and what's my favorite product? 
Oh, I'll do something really nationalistic in a minute, but just keep going with the question, Simone. Okay, um, Sue, so you talked about the importance of numbers, uh, but how important is it also to go with your hunches or your gut? Oh, gut. I didn't even hear the question, but I know the answer is gut. So, no, but, you, but numbers is so important to you. So you're saying that hunches trumps... No, oh, no, 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 no. Against finance, read the numbers, right? If the numbers don't add up, then you go to the gut and there's kind of, oh my God, I'm scared. But actually, if your gut tells you you've got to do it and the numbers add up, then your passion will get you through. Um, and is staying scared in business uh, important? Is staying about? scared in business? Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. Because it's like, it's a drug, isn't it? I mean, it's my drug. Um, I don't take the other drugs. I don't need to. I have this. And it's a consciousness that I need to be growing and learning and doing exciting stuff. And, you know, I'm a product person. I think this is hysterical. So we didn't know whether to launch this. I don't know if you can see my Union Jack bag. Um, this is the ugliest bag with the best base for pitch size that you've ever seen in your life. And it is a Union Jack bag. And Kip Ricks is brilliant for outdoors. But the truth is, is that we're like sitting on this amazing product and we're thinking is anybody gonna and actually the kit bricks business which is a brilliant you know organizer sports system triathletes and obstacle course racing all of that event stuff has been cancelled so you know bring a great product to market we can't now keep up with union jack it, she couldn't make the stuff up i mean in the same way that we're absolutely gobsmacked and amazed that acupressure which I used to think was a bullshit product and it's not, um, is selling like hotcakes. So yeah, I mean, we, we are doing, we are not waiting. The world is an enormous place, right? You know, there's 60 something million people. I haven't sold them all a Union Jack bag yet, but they're British. So I intend to, and that's my target. And I'm like, I, I don't, I think if the numbers really if you can get there and you're realistic and you're honest with yourself about the costing and the tool setup charge and the passion and, and the way you're going to sell your product originality, you can't, I don't think the world needs more candles, frankly. I think they have to be something therapeutic, but yeah. Another question? And on the one on the front, so you talked about a silk pillow, but yeah. you have time for that. What do you need? No, no, no. It's, it's literally, we, we don't, bring a, we don't bring a product to market because when I used to represent other brands under license, I just felt that a lot of them were less honest with the real content and the source. And, you know, we're a natural brand, so we want to use a silk pillow. It has to be a pure silk pillow. We're not 100% sure of the source consistency and supply chain. And why bring something out if there are other silk pillows in the world and you don't think yours is the best of the rest? So everything we do in our brands is you know, either ugly and unique, but really serves a purpose or utterly original and, and beautiful quality that beats others. And, and, you know, that's values, isn't it? And through this whole, where you've had to go, you are, you know, everything, a lot of what you're doing is around the hospitality industry and you've had to kind of reshape it. How have you felt with it? Have you felt scared at any point or have you felt excited? And I think I'm probably asking from this from a personal question as well. Yeah, no, I mean, I think if we're time not... Where I've got one of, my, one of my team on the phone who's been furloughed, who actually came and volunteered for you. Where's Emma Kane? You're around here somewhere. My very first conference, you took two people in the audience, put their hand up and said, I want to come and work for you. And you yeah. gave both of them work shadowing opportunities. Emma's on the call uh, right now, uh, and Emma's currently furloughed, looking, you know, put a great, you would have loved it, she put a great help me shout, I need help shout on, on LinkedIn on Friday, and I've got about 50 odd comments. What advice would you give to Emma? Because she probably won't ask, so I'm going to ask for her. Um, about the scariness thing. I mean, you know, I get sweaty armpits, I get sweaty knickers, you know it, Simone. I mean, I talk about being scared all the time because, you know, the truth is, is people have a perception that just because you're perceived to be successful, that everything's an easy ride. And the truth is I do this stuff to keep my act sharp. And I think you gotta keep pushing boundaries and asking people for work experience and shadowing. And yeah, I mean, of course it's scary. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm scared about all of the company's potential to thrive because 
there is so much change in the world. But I then question how much energy and time should I spend looking backwards and worrying about, and this is a brilliant Dale Carnegie quote, which is, what's the worst thing that could happen, right? And actually I then go, well, looking backwards, right? Look forwards because, you know, what's been has been and I can't change it. So A, I've never done the guilt. Well, I did I, until I got old enough and gray enough and a bit more mature. I used to think about that guilt thing of being the traveling mom and never being there. I'm not having that shit. Um, my children live in a bloody manner, thanks to me. Um, but, you know, yeah, I'm scared. I'll, I'll probably always be scared because I think you should never be complacent and, and you should never lose that infectious passion. But you've got to not sit on that anxiety. You know, there are tools, there are breathing techniques, there is product, there are like, you know, I mean, we laugh about it, but here is my de-stress candle because, you know, it's, it's an ambiance. So change, you know, I genuinely talked about this with some guys the other day and I said, look, if facing this way in the room isn't working for you, go to the end of the table, start again, start a new angle, start with a blank piece of paper. Um, I think that's really important. Well, listen, I, sadly, we're going to have to let you go because no doubt you'll have a three o'clock Zoom call if I know you, Lara. Well, I just want to, th on behalf of everyone, I want to thank you personally uh, for giving your time up. You are always so generous in paying it back. Um, um, and um, anyone, but please, just before you drop off, if there's anything that you need help with, drop it in here. Uh, read Lara's book, More, Ball, uh, More Balls and Most, which is fantastic. And it always talks about her sweaty naked moment, which will come back to what she's just referred to. But, but thank you. And, you know, keep connected. I think this is the power, even in this climate where we think we're all disconnected. There's never been more of a time that we can be connected, including how I connected with Karen from Western Perth uh, last week. So <laughs> be, I think it is about be kind, be generous. Uh, let's keep going through this thrival, I think is what you called it. And yeah. Let's all keep aiming for our own victories and keep checking in on each other. So, Laura, thank Actually, you. Can I just say one more thing? Because I should try and sell you something because you should always try and sell an audience. We've been I've got selling the links in here as well. Yeah, okay. So we have been selling these kind of um, care or just thoughtfulness for people who are working from home and being abused by the office because we're working at home. Reach out to Centered, reach out to any of my brands. And if you use the code Lara20, L A R A 20, you get a discount on any of the brands. So help yourself, fill your boots. Thanks very much. Lara, thank you so much. Um, really appreciate it. Thank all of you for your time. Thank you for those of you I know. Thank you, you know, you know, I am not just for Christmas, I'm for life. So <laughs> thanks all of you. Be safe and be well and be in touch.